Hello and thanks for joining me on another episode of Zoof Talks Photography Podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to go through a few updates and what's going on in the news for photography. We'll have a quick look at some new gear. Canon RF 100 to 300 2.8 lens sounds like a bit of a beauty. We can have a look at some articles to find out if that is as great as people say it is. Leica M1 monochrome review. Who needs a black and white camera? Maybe someone does. We'll have a look at that today. New photo enhancements on the Samsung Galaxy S23. We're not all about fancy expensive cameras. You can use your mobile phone and relax and take photographs. So we're going to be looking at that today as well as a DJI Mavic 3 Pro. We're going to check out what's going on there. We've got a few other fun news uh, around the Nikon. There's a new Nikon lens, right? Nikon Nikko Z600 F4. We're going to have a look at what's going on over there as well as did you know Android began its life as an operating system for cameras? That's like Android's massive now, but that's where they started. Thank you for trusted creators for making this episode possible. Let's go into today's topics. Monochrome cameras seem to be a, a regular thing coming up now. So a lot of people do convert cameras where they look at options, but Leica M1 has dropped a monochrome review uh, camera, which is Petapixel. We're looking at the article. What do you think? Would you have a black and white camera? Every time I review the Leica digital rangefinder the major argument against buying one becomes the matter of price versus practicality how can I recommend a camera that is neither affordable nor versatile okay interesting so oh okay it looks like a proper old school film camera the photos look nice but can I just whack my DSLR into black and white mode will I get the same photo Mm, questionable obviously it has its own feel its unique feel so if you have a canon you know what types of colors that takes photos of like it has its own unique feel they are very good photos however in this day and age would you buy one that's a very interesting topic i'd love to hear from you let me know what you think about that mm uh is one of those i think one of those that people will think about but if you're watching this today do let me know i'd love to hear from you especially if you're listening or on the podcast Let's have a quick look into it in a bit more detail and find out what is actually going on here. So, okay, the overall look of the M1 monochrome is self a completely monochromatic with one of the red accents typically found on the Leica cameras. This makes for a very discreet look. Okay. I like how they took the the photos in black and white as well of the actual camera. So, it's uh, yeah, overall it looks like a mm or do you want to just go old school and get black and white film in a a film camera again if you're watching on the the podcast version of this I have got the article up on screen if not it's okay I'll explain what I'm looking at here so it'll help you listening today unfortunately the M11 uses an imaging sensor with a very slow readout speed mm this causes a rolling shutter effect seriously distorting any subjects traveling lengthwise okay so already I'm feeling a little bit like is that money well spent? Do we get a price? How much are people spending on these cameras now? Let's have a quick look. It does take it takes nice photos. I have to give it that. However, I roughly no. $9,200. Are you having a laugh, mate? That is very expensive for a camera in this day and age. So you don't want to alienate your customers if they're using mobile phones. Who has this camera? Can you please let me know if you have this camera? Holy moly, mate. What do you reckon is is it time that people were moving away from press cameras if you were an aspiring photojournalist during most of the 19th and 20th centuries then your dream machine was likely not a Hasselblad or a Rolleiflex a Leica or any of the other vintage film cameras commonly cited as the most desirable collectibles nowadays no the tool of choice among the creme de creme of f- f- professional f- journalists was what's called a press camera so the origins okay let's have a quick look oh okay this is the big boxes like you know like, this that's what you're looking at there so you stand in front of the camera for like 10 minutes before it exposes the photograph but people are collecting these article and uh, pet pe- pixel I'm looking at see how easy it was how easy it is now to take photographs you should be I'm like a old grandpa now you should be happy with the type of gear you've got now but mm Okay the uh, this combines with rather slow lens meant that long exposures were necessary at any time of day no matter the subject and thus walk about photography including live coverage and reportage uh, remained a pipe dream 
Yeah, it's always nice to look back and see like what what was what was going on in the good old days, wasn't it? That was a nice little uh, blast of the past in Petapixel. What do you reckon? Would you be smashing at a big camera? Hmm, interesting one here as well. Then the the Samsung S23. <sighs> Apparently the photos look amazing on it. We've come to a point now. It may still be in beta, but Samsung's Galaxy Enhance X app looks like an AI marvel for image processing. We've got an article here that seems to be explaining that digital camera. It's no longer a requirement to have a massive DSLR camera everywhere you go and taking photographs and stuff. You can just whack out your mobile phone. And it seems to be for majority of people, you should be okay. You know? So why have a really fancy camera when you can have something as simple as a mobile phone that does you a nice, interesting shot? Galaxy S23 looks amazing. And a series have a new photo enhancement app to play with, available to download as a beta from Galaxy Store. The new Galaxy X Enhance X app is designed to make photo enhancements as easy as possible. So it's basically like filters. People are doing this on TikTok anyway, so you're a bit late to the game, aren't you? Uh, Galaxy old mate, old chum, old pal. But I saw the article, I, saw, I thought I'd share it with you. What do you think? Do you like that kind of thing? Hmm. I don't know, mate. I don't know. So what else do you think is going to be around the corner? You know, I like a bit of canage. Canon, canonage is that a word? Canonage, canonage. So when you're looking at these types of options for yourself, should you be looking at like a behemoth of a Canon? They have just announced the RF 100 to 300 F 2.8 L I S M U S M. What does that all stand for? So 100 to 300 is like the range. 2.8 is a F stop. L is a luxury range. IS stands for image stabilized. USM is ultrasonic motor. So it's a bit more quicker at focusing basically. Okay, so it fills one of the last major gaps in the brand's RF lens lineup. Instead of being a traditional 300 prime lens, this zooms. Okay, you know what? How much is it? That's the question, mate. How much you want from me? $9,499, mate. Work out your pocket change, people. Pick up that lens right about now. That's what you need to be doing with your life, picking up that lens. So what are we getting? Looking at the specs of the Canon RF 300 2.8, Several features caught my eye. First and foremost, of course, is the price. While the Canon RF lens de retails for 2800 the new RF will be available at 9500 This, of course, is a huge difference for major, major difference for many. But if we compare the price in the current Canon lens situation, begins to change. So yeah, obviously, they're going to want more money. It's a new lens, mate, new technology. Give it a few years and maybe, it'll, well, no, actually. Canon lenses seem to hold their value. I can contest to that with all the lenses I've got from Canon. What do you reckon? Would you use this? Is this like a wildlife, maybe, maybe sports lens, wildlife lens, one of the two, but I don't know. I don't know if I can justify spending that kind of money on like a lens like this. Photography life article, thank you very much for this. Nice overview. If you're thinking about taking photos and you've got that lens that we looked at earlier, how do you take epic bride prep photos at a wedding? If you're taking wedding photography, one of the most important parts of any good look is the first pages which draw the reader in. That's what getting ready photos are for a wedding day. So let's make them epic. Article here from F Stoppers. I've done a couple of weddings over the years. I'm not really a wedding photographer, but I've helped people out who wanted a photographer last minute and someone's let them down. It's not rocket science. All you gotta do is get creative take natural photographs of people exactly like what's going on here you can see photos there and f-stoppers and you know the moments so candid moments like stuff they'll remember oh yeah the take a picture of the rollers on the desk when they're rolling them and stuff as in oh yeah remember we didn't have enough or something silly like that and that memory ties back and look at this backlighting with spray really good photos here and then they've got the dress in the background so you want to take photos people are not taking if someone else is taking photos of their mobile phone, you don't want to be there because you're going to get the same shot, more or less. Oh, look, check this out. He's got a mirror. I like that. Mirror light effect. See? Very creative. Nice article here by, about Vision. About Jason Vincent. Visionimages.com. He's on F-Stoppers. Nice job. Well done. Like that. Like that a lot. Nice photos there. Again, these are all articles that I'm checking out at the moment. So if you're listening on the podcast, thank you for joining me here today. This all show notes are available on zolftalks.com to show my appreciation for you joining me here today i would like to offer you some extra value for free i have a collection of free resources and help sheets that are 
specifically designed to help you focus on what I'm talking about today. Check out the link in the description or go to zolftalks.com. Click resources. Let me show you what that looks like. And you can get a link directly to everything I talk about. So that's what the website looks like. When you go on zolftalks.com, you click show resources. It opens up and you can basically put your name and email. And I'll send everything to your inbox like a nice little guide sheet. And again, we are powered by trustedcreators.org. And this podcast is halfway through. So if you made it this far, well done. Thank you for joining me today. We've got a few more articles to go. I've got a, a fun one as well. So hang about. I think you're going to enjoy this next one. Droid started as something on cameras. So the operating system, Android, was on digital cameras first. Before Android powered modern smartphones, the company pre-Google was focused on making a universal operating system for cameras. It raises the question of an alternative reality that never happened, but what if it did? So you're basically saying to me, you've got like a mobile phone, smartphone, on the back of a mobile phone, on the back of your camera before you had a phone. What? Mind boggling. So from all digital camera. Okay, you know what? That is quite, I like the article. What, who's that from? Wasim Ahmed, straightimages.com. We're on F-stoppers. He's got a bit of an article here. Nice job. I like that. Uh, I'll, I'll encourage you to go and watch the video. Uh, there is, well, he's covered an article by another creator, actually, which he may have said in his article, but let's go over to the guy's channel so we know who is actually made the video and made put all the effort in this guy's uh, mentioned in his article to have a look so it's nice to have that let's have a look who is this Ooh, the world this would have changed photography forever snappings is a youtube channel classic digital cameras nice channel like it like it so yeah definitely have a look at these articles it's always interesting to see how this how things would have turned out easy DJI Mavic Pro. Did you know that Camera Jabber has done a nice little review here? I want to check this out. What are we saying? Okay, I want to. Can we look at this? Oh, it doesn't let me click on it. It doesn't let me click on it. Is that like a glitch thing? Or is it just have to scroll down? Okay, here we go. The DJI Mavic 3 and now the Mavic 3 Pro are some of the most impressive drones on the market today. Mm, okay, so they're very impressive. But is it what we need? Mm, I don't know. Do we do you require do you require some Mavic Proness? This is a DJI Mavic 3 Pro review. I don't know, mate. I don't know. Okay, let's have a look. What are we saying? So the while the price difference between the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Pro is relatively small, the Pro still feels like a significant upgrade. Pros and gains. Okay. Lengthy flight times, so better flight times, outstanding image and video quality, incredible easy to fly and expensive is against it. Oh my god. Okay, that looks quite snazzy, doesn't it? Flight time is 43 minutes, maximum speed 21 miles per second. MS? Uh, what we got here? Okay, so it's uh, F4. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, nice. It's got nice specs. I like the I like the features on there, packed with features that make one of the most advanced drones. So again, Mavic are always leading the the camera market in flying drones anyway. So we're doing quite well. I like that. What do you reckon about that? Is that one you would have? Would you buy that? Is that your kind of cup of tea? It's interesting. It's always interesting. We've got a couple of uh, a couple of funny ones, by the way. I reckon you would enjoy as well. You wanna you wanna see that one? There's another one here today. Wait a minute. Wait wait up. Nico. Nikon are finally coming to the market, people, with their 600mm camera lens. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. Guess what? Teenager makes $4,000 a month after starting side hustle from Parent Shed. What was he doing? What was he doing? Hmm... Okay, come on. Let's get to the main. Ah, oh, chocolate sales, prime sales. He's got. He's got a holy mo tuck shop. The teen helps promote the sweets shack on TikTok, where he managed to rack up more than twenty three thousand followers. Good job, well done. Loving it. Get creative, people. That's what we need to do. That right, nicely rounds up our Zolf Talks podcast today. Again, 
we do go live on TikTok, by the way. So just a nice segue from that last article. At Trusted Creators, you can check us out. Thank you for joining us here today. Again, we are powered by Trusted Creators. So we'll see you in the next episode.